Okay, uh, this is Dave Spoon and uh, Propellerhead have come today uh, to Portsmouth, England uh, to visit me and uh, we're going to go through some stuff in the studio in a bit. Um, some people will know me um, from some of my records like At Night, some of my remixes from the past couple of years and uh, you know Reason is a huge part of, of what I do, it's the way I make my music and I love it. Reason basically just enabled me to get ideas going pretty quickly. Um, the, the way uh, you can program the drum machine was something I was used to from school because uh, we had the, you had a, a 606 drum machine. We had the 303 there as well actually, which was quite a fine. That was uh, in, a, in, a, in the cupboard. Anyone that's read my biog, I always mention that because that was pretty unusual, I think, for a school to have a 303 in it. Anyway, um, so the whole, the layout of Reason, um, the sounds you could make instantly with it um, without there being too much that was pre-prepared uh, was great all of a sudden. You know, I could make sounds quickly that were my own. They weren't just out of the sound bank necessary or they weren't samples or loops and stuff. You, I could program things really quickly. It was like starting over again. You know, it really was... Uh, I was kind of rediscovering how to put tracks together and... It was exciting, it was exciting. Okay, so now we've come up to my studio, which is in my house upstairs. Um, and I've loaded up uh, one of my more recent tracks, which is called Lummox. Uh, strange name, as most people that know my music will, get, will uh, be familiar with. Um, and it's on my label television, so there's a little plug there. Available now. Um, I'm gonna go through how I put most of it together. Um, the bass sound in there has raised a few questions. How did I do that? Um, the track is completely in reason. Um, I do use Logic sometimes as well, but this is one of the uh, one of the tracks that is only in reason. I started writing it on a plane on the way to Canada uh, when I went there for Christmas. It was just a, a drum groove, uh, basic drums, so uh, would have been pretty much similar to to just this. So that's pretty much what I came home with. Uh, so I didn't have any bass line, anything like that. So as soon as I loaded it up, it was pretty much just a loop with a groove. Uh, I knew what I needed straight away, which was something pretty sick in there. So I started working on the bass sound. Um, always love using the, the subtractor, of course. After a bit of work and a bit of tweaking, I ended up with this, and I'll show you how I've put that together in a sec. So this is what it sounds like. Uh, that's it obviously filtered down. I'll just skip it forward. It just kind of gets a little bit more nasty. Or nice depending how you like it. <laughs> and then there's a second subtractor which does this. And then the, uh, the subtractor in question gets a little bit more nasty. Okay, so here's my, uh, my subtractor here. Um, this is, um, I haven't put everything in a combinator here, but I've, I've just chained my devices together. So yeah, so I just basically had a sawtooth here and a sine wave underneath it um, to kind of make the sound a little bit, have a little bit more weight behind it. Um, and then started to add, I mean, I love the EQ that you get from the vocoder. You get a, a real kind of unique sound from that. I kind of made this sound by accident. A lot of the best moments in the studio are definitely accidents, uh, trust me. So I was kind of messing about with the, uh, mod, the envelope here, the modulation, which gives it that kind of, that kind of pitch bend almost sound. So I can... Obviously, as I increase the decay, the longer it will take to, for the sound to dip. So I kind of knew by having it here, it just gave it much more of, a, of an edge. So, so that's kind of that's that's kind of that sound there. If I if I bring the track on a little bit, the automation will change. It's all in filter number two. Uh, the the envelope is kind of driving filter one. So I wanted to stay away from that. And filter two is kind of an overall kind of global 
filter if you like. Um, so as that adjusts, it kind of gives you a real nice uh, kind of over filter if you like, a global filter as I said. So, um, and the resonance on here as well, as the track goes on, you can kind of get real kind of nasty with it. So if I play a little bit more of the track, you can see here that the resonance has moved up, which gives it the kind of, obviously a more resonant sound, but it gives it a real kind of acid uh, sound that you've got there. Now acid normally is kind of, you know, it's a lot on the on the envelopes as well, but you know, here I, lo I, lo I like to, to kind of be acid -y, but in a very much, in very much in a different way. Um, which is how I came up with this kind of bass sound. So it's a little bit more of the track and things kind of getting a little bit nastier, if you like. And there, that bit there, uh, I've forgotten so someone, I've forgotten who it was now, a well-known producer though, uh, was really intrigued as to how I how I did that, and uh, when I told them it's just a subtractor, it's like really wow. And to to me, it's no surprise because it's you know I've been using Reason for a long time, and you know this has been there since day one. So it's uh, you know it's something I learned how to use very early on. So here, using when you've got uh, two oscillators running, uh, you can basically on oscillator one, the FM frequency modulation will just kind of you know open up a whole new world. So so if I hold down a note. you can hear exactly what that's doing there. Which is just the kind of craziness that I wanted in, in the track. So uh, again, un whoops, again, slightly unplanned, but that's where I ended up. And just through messing about while I was playing the bass line, I knew that somewhere in the track this, this had to happen. So that's how I got that sound, frequency modulation. And then it cuts out. And then the acid kind of, uh, there's a lot more automation on the acid. So then the track basically runs for a while with some crazy acid tweaking, which I, I drew in. I didn't use my controller for this, for this part. Um, so all this was drawn in. And then we get to the bit which there's been mixed opinion on, which is this. Um, Stop it there. Basically, um, I mean, the sound has, has, you know, the old kind of rave sound has been coming back in for the last year or two, uh, big time. And I'm a huge, huge fan of, uh, of all that stuff. That's where I got into into doing this back in '92. Uh, so any kind of sound like this, uh, like this stab, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be very much into using. So. Um, I can't remember where the sample came from now. It's been in my sample bank for a while. Um, so yeah, so I just wanted a complete change from the rest of the track, which is a groove with the bass line. I wanted a complete change. And if people on the dance floor think, where did that come from? Um, so hopefully that's achieved that. I've had a few DJs come back and say, oh, you know, it's um, rave, old school, you know, not into it too much, but it works. It does work. And, um, you know, I've seen it work. Fortunately, on uh, you know many many of the uh, of the cooler dance floors, definitely uh, Ministry of Sound was a moment when I played that for the first time. To hear the the the, the sound from Reason sound the way that it does in on a sound system like that was um, was was phenomenal, you know. Um, so so that's it. That's Lummox. That's how I put that together. I hope that opens up uh, a few ideas for people. Anyway, um, and I mean my, my my advice off the back of this would be. Don't be shy to experiment, you know. Again, like, use the uh, the vocoder that you, as an EQ. You get real interesting sounds from that. It gave it that sound. So there you go, Lummox.